Why isn't creative financing working for you? Have you ever asked yourself that? Are you somebody that just doesn't believe it works at all? Nobody's gonna do that. Why would somebody finance their business to me? And these people that are teaching the no money down strategies, you know, I, don't, I just don't believe that's true. Do you find yourself saying that? Do you find yourself doubting that doing a deal with creative financing or seller financing is possible for you? If you find yourself doubting that, then that makes you perfectly sane, normal, and probably even a little bit intelligent because it's a real legitimate question. What I'd like to do today is I would like to demystify some of the seller financing and creative financing. They're not myths, but they're misconceptions. So I'll identify these misconceptions and I'll show you exactly how to solve for them so that you can actually go write deals, have people accept your offers and actually have them finish up at the closing table. And it's really simple. The first thing you have to remember is this. When you hear the term, no money down, it doesn't mean no money at all. It means none of your own money or low money down. And like, if someone talks about a deal that they did where they didn't put any money down, ask them to put it on paper and draw out the moving pieces for you so that you can actually see what it was that they did. If they can't do that, then the chances are really good that they didn't do something that's gonna be repeatable for you. So with that, I'm gonna share with you a little spreadsheet. I'm giving you a crude version of this spreadsheet. If you stay with me to the end, I'll tell you exactly where to find a much more complete one than this. But I call this the deal structure pieces spreadsheet, and I'm gonna show you exactly what makes it work. Now I don't write so great, so I gave myself a head start before I started this video, because I really don't want you to be lost on my writing. I want you to get what I'm gonna put on here because it's gonna really turn the lights on for you and it's gonna get you in a place where you can operate and do deals like you've been doing them for decades. So the first thing is, is this column is the deal funding column. In the deal funding column, you'll find the different types of deals that can be done. The first one, of course, is the SBA backed loan from a preferred lender or a bank. The second one, those are usually called 7A loans, or if it's a much bigger deal, it's a 504 loan. You don't need to know all that right now. You just need to know that that's one of the best ways to fund your deals. The Another best way to fund the deal is the one that you guys probably have already heard about, and that's seller financing. And these right here, they're like Sonny and Cher. They're like Hall and Oates. They're like Batman and Robin. They're better together. Seller financing and SBA lending are better together. That means the SBA is guaranteeing, it goes to the bank and says, bank, if you lend Mark the money, I will guarantee up to 85% of his loan, 70 to 85% of his loan. That means if it doesn't work out, we're gonna reimburse you so you're not at a loss. And so the bank says, that's great. What about the other 20% of my deal? And so the way you solve that is the SBA lender makes borrowers show up with 20% down. Or at least they ask for that. They don't always get it, they almost never do. Part of the way you can get your 20% down is through seller financing. So where can these two types of financing be used? Well, SBA loans can be used on the big part. That's the 70 to 80% of the deal price. So if the deal is a million dollars, the SBA will fund 700 to $800,000 of that happily, the SBA lender will. And that's no problem. That still leaves $200,000 that has not been accounted for. Seller financing can typically be used in this situation for the small part of the deal, 20 to 30% seller financing. Now I'm gonna tell you something crazy happened on May 11th. On May 11th, the SBA came up with a new rule that has totally changed the game and given you opportunities to do deals like you have never had before, most likely in your lifetime. What happens is when you do a seller financing note with your deal, the SBA used to insist that you were not allowed to start paying that seller back until the SBA loan had been paid off in full. So in that million dollar deal scenario, if the SBA lender gives me 80%, and the seller gives me 20%, when I get ready to pay that seller back, that's fine as long as I've already paid off the $800,000.
If I have not paid off the $800,000, I am not allowed to pay off the $200,000. Now, here's where one of my favorite speakers, Myron Golden, would say, unless, or he'd say, unless. Everybody say unless, and people go, oh, unless. So I won't do that, but I will tell you, unless the SBA changes the rules, and they did. On May 11th, they said that you can start paying back that seller note right away. And that is a game changer. Now sellers are even more open to the idea of helping you with the small part of your loan by giving you most of your down payment so that the SBA lender can give you the big part of your loan. That is a very, very big deal. Now, in these other grids and, and the spreadsheet that I have that I will make available to you as a bonus for those of you who stay till the end of this video. By the way, if you like what you're learning and you think it's gonna help you do more deals, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, don't hesitate to share it with somebody that you care about, and I do hope that you are taking good notes. So, the other types of deal funding that exist are credit cards, there's personal loans, there's HELOCs, which is a home equity line of credit, and there's about 100 others. So, I'm just giving you a couple. So, for instance, credit cards can be used for the small part. Personal loans can be used for the small part. Home equity lines of credit can be used for either. So if you know what type of funding should be used where, now you're not running around using the wrong tool on the wrong job. And what most people out there are doing in the marketplace is they are going up to sellers and they are going with one tool. You guessed it, seller financing and they try to do their entire deal from soup to nuts with seller financing, and they're out looking for the deal that's gonna happen that way. Well, if you're looking, if you're only looking for 100% owner finance deals, out of 1,000 deals that you find, one or two of them might be good. Most of them are going to be unprofitable, in decline, maybe some legal problems, maybe heavy, heavily debt laden, maybe too debt laden or with shrinking cash flows or a bad team or environmental changes that you can't control. And so that buyer is saying, or that seller is saying, yeah, I'll do the deal 100% financing. Sure, why not? Now, I'm not saying that's the only ones out there, but if you get good at using all the tools, why would you only use one? You know, for the first 10 years that I played golf, I only used a seven iron. I know you probably want to say, is that all you had? No, it's the only one that I could hit well. And so I just couldn't use any other club or iron. So I teed off with a seven iron. I chipped with a seven iron. I, my short game, my long game, all was a seven iron. And then one day I got up and I made a bet with my friend that I could get on the green in one shot with my, you guessed it, my seven iron. I took a nice little relaxed backswing and then I followed through. And then when I hit the ball, I heard this crazy sound. It sounded like a broken guitar string. It's like, <laughs> And lo and behold, the head of my seven iron went flying off into the distance, never to be found again. And from that day forward, I needed to learn how to use the other tools. I've got a question to ask you and you don't have to answer it out loud, but you need to answer it to yourself. Are you treating seller financing the way I treated my seven iron? If that's you, stop it. Use it in conjunction with the other available tools to you and watch the success you have with deal making soar. Now I'm gonna share with you this. If you actually take the time to learn these strategies and some of the others like vendor financing, receivables financing, factoring, which is another form of receivables financing, maybe doing some pre-asset tie-up, pre-sale deals where the money from the sale goes into escrow for closing that you can use towards your down payment, maybe silent partners, maybe bringing on non-silent partners, maybe starting an investment group, raising capital. There's so many ways for you to do a deal. And if you're out there treating your seller financing like it's a seven iron, just wait. The day is coming where you're gonna hear that broken guitar string. And it won't be pleasant because it could be costing you millions. If you like this information and you want more success in doing deals and buying businesses and buying real estate, or whatever it is that you're trying to operate in, if it involves having to negotiate with a seller, 
Keep on listening. Subscribe to this channel. Soak it all up. Listen to my stuff. Listen to Cody Sanchez's stuff. Listen to Roland Frazier's material. Take in Myron Golden's material. And watch things really turn around for you. Because if you are adequately equipped, there is nothing in the deal-making space that you can't make happen. I could be talking to the next Mark Cuban, the next Richard Branson, the next Ted Turner, and that would be a very special thing. I'll look forward to seeing you if you like this video. Check this next one out. In the meantime, I will look forward to seeing you at the closing table.